Welcome back to the Roundup, Raven fans. I'm Jack Clayton alongside Pez and August. On today's episode, we'll be discussing Leangelo Ball's arrest in China, the Chiefs' chances of making the playoffs, the Cavs' struggles and, and LeBron's role in that, and a memoir to Roy Holiday. To start things off, uh, what do you guys have to say about Leangelo Ball's arrest in China? Well, I think he's just plain stupid. And uh, he's already got, like, enough money to uh, buy his own things. And pretty sure that um, if he even wanted anything, he'd just have to go to his daddy and get some money. Um, I don't even think it's anything wrong with him. I just think him and his teammates were not thinking whatsoever. First of all, they go to UCLA, which is a major sports program and basketball. Historic. If they wanted anything, all they have to do is go to the boosters or the coaches. I'm not saying it's not illegal, but if they wanted something, they can get it by going to the boosters. With that being said, their coach came out and said that the guys who got in trouble and arrested were not starters. So I feel like that's already a shot at those three guys, and especially at Jello, that he's not as important as his, bro as his brother was. And not to mention that these cr crimes occurred in China, in which the government is very different than ours. The, lo the legal system definitely does not work the same way, and apparently they could be facing uh, up to 10 years in jail time. Three to 10 years, yeah. Which is, they're probably going to get, because the conviction rate over there is 98.7%. Not very good odds of those three men getting out of that. So moving on to the Chiefs, so far this year they have a record of 6-3 and three and were for a while atop the power rankings and, and are still atop the rankings in the AFC West. Recently, they've lost three out of the last four games. Uh, how do you guys feel about their chances to succeed in the playoffs this year? I think they got a really good chance to succeed. They got Alex Smith, who's having probably arguably one of the best seasons of his career. Not only that, you got an MVP candidate in Kareem Hunt, and you guys, and you have steady players like Travis Kelsey and uh, Tyreek Hill. But other than, I think what they really need to get on pace to doing again is play calling. Their play calling hasn't really is or isn't really like it was the first few weeks. They've kind of gotten away from Alex Smith's style and what worked for him in college, which is what worked the first five or six games of the year, and that's going to a college-style offense. Um, I think they should worry because they, have, they need to win at least four out of the seven games, uh, their next seven games, and um, either, uh, if they don't do that, they could uh, have a rough time getting into the playoffs. As August said, historically, teams take about ten wins to get into the playoffs. However, there's not necessarily a strong team in the AFC West or in the AFC at all. Their next seven games include the New York Giants, the New York Jets, Miami Dolphins, Los Angeles Chargers, Oakland Raiders, and the Denver Broncos. Yeah, I, I truly only see one threat from those teams, and that's, uh, that's the Raiders, and that's because of their quarterback, Derek Carr. Uh, I think once the Chiefs find out what their defensive scheme is going to be again and try to get those players to buy in once again, it's going to be fine. All right, on to the next thing. The Cavs have started off the season a little rough after going to three or four straight finals appearances. Some are beginning to question LeBron's role and how successful he is really leading his team. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I don't think it's LeBron. It's uh, definitely not LeBron. I think it's more of the role players and the guys who aren't the superstars making the most money. I think you brought in Dwayne Wade to play big minutes. He's not doing it. You have guys like Tristan Thompson, you guys that they signed a $20 million a year deals, and he's only scoring 4.4 points a game. That's 10th right. on his team. And Jay Crowder has been pretty much non-existent after a trade. And they're missing their starting point guard in Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas' hip is still, um, it's still out. He's still out until the second half after All-Star break. And um, Derrick Rose went down with an ankle injury, and which brought in... Um, Jose Calderon, and after that, they uh, removed Tristan Thompson from the starting lineup and made uh, Kevin Love the starting center, which um, he hasn't played that role in at least six years. So, yeah, Some interesting just... LeBron statistics for you. He's leading his team with 28.9 points per game, leading his team in assists, and leading his team in assists with 9.1, and blocks per game with 1.2. So obviously he is producing... It's just maybe his team around him is not doing so hot. Yeah, I think it's LeBron trying to take on three roles at once. He's the GM, he's the head coach, and he's also the best player on the team. Yeah. That's not going to equal up for success. Finally, we'd like to think about Roy Holiday for a little bit. He was rumored to have crashed out outside of Tampa, Florida in a plane that he was flying himself. Now, 
Roy Holiday was an eight-time All-Star playing for the Toronto Blue Jays and the Phillies. Do you guys have any special moments from his career? Uh, a game I remember a lot is, uh, I believe it was in 2008, when they had the run of the playoffs. It was him, Cole Hamels, and Cliff Lee, and with the big bats of Ryan Howard and Chase Utley. They went really far, but what I remember is in the NLDS, he threw a no-hitter. And that was his first game ever pitching in the playoffs, and it was memorable. One of the only pitchers, one of the only six pitchers exactly, to win the Cy Young in both the American League and National League, threw a perfect game and threw 67 complete games throughout his career. Rest in peace, Roy Holiday. That's all we have for game day today. Check back next Thursday for a game day Northwest and later in the week for a new edition of Raven Roundup.